Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know this is the last presentation, so I'll try to make it uh, the most dynamic I can. Um, so today I will present you a paper co-authored with my colleagues, uh, Walter Hjalad and uh, Maud Note, on the labor supply of households facing a risk of job loss. In that paper, uh, what we are trying to assess is um, whether individuals are already adjusting the uh, labor supply when their partners uh, fear losing their job. And why we think it's a relevant question, we think it's important to better understand what are the main drivers uh, of a labor supply decision within an household. And in one word, the answer to that research question is yes. If a person is at risk of losing his or her job, the partner will be more likely either to enter the labor market if he was previously inactive, or to increase the number of hours worked if he was already employed. And this research question related to two strands of the literature. The first one is um, the literature on the added worker effect, which is looking at the impact of an actual job loss. And it's showing that there is such a mechanism of uh, labor supply adjustment of the partner if the other partner actually loses uh, his or her job. And there is another part of the literature which is um, based on what is called a precautionary labor supply. And um, this literature is uh, focusing more on uh, the individual level and it's showing that if an individual fears of having an income loss, he will adapt his own uh, labor supply as a sort of insurance mechanism. And more recently, Ellie World uh, developed a theoretical model uh, based on that idea, and so she builds a two-person model in which the partner will provide this precautionary labor supply in answer to some uh, labor market risks from uh, the partner. And based on those two strands of the literature, how a contribution uh, will be of two uh, main uh, points. The first one is that in addition to the classical evaluation of an actual job loss, we will provide also um, an estimation of what would happen if um, there is a fear of job loss from the partner. And indeed, we will show that this is an important additional factor to take into account when we look at labor supply decision within an household. And we will also show that this uh, finding is particularly true during crisis periods. Moreover, we will also look at how the impact could have heterogeneous effect depending on, both, on two factors. The first one is whether um, there are children in the household, and the other one will be uh, depending on the level of education of the partner who is adapting uh, the labor supply. Okay, so before entering to the deep analysis, let me first show you some definition and statistics and starting with the data we rely on. So uh, to do this analysis, we rely on uh, micro data provided by Eurostat, which are the labor force surveys. And this is a very rich data set which provides uh, personal, household, and employment characteristics. And for uh, this data set, we have a panel um, for which we observe uh, the two individuals of the household during two consecutive quarters in a given year. And since what we will analyze is the labor supply of people, we will restrict ourselves to people aged between 20 to uh, 64 years, so working age population. We end up with uh, 16 European countries over the period 2005 to 2020, and this means that we observe 3.6 million uh, couples in our sample. Okay, um, let me give you some definitions uh, before really uh, starting the, the analysis. Um, for in a household, we will define two partners. What we will call partner one is the one for whom there will be either a job loss or a risk of job loss. And what I will call partner two is the one who is adapting uh, the labor supply. And how we will define a job loss? Um, partner one um, 
lose his job if he was employed during the first quarter and um, becomes either unemployed or inactive in the next quarter because he has been fired. And why are we focusing only on dismissal is um, to have the, the most possible unexpected shock that is appearing for the, for the household and also to avoid any uh, anticipated adjustment of partner two before the shock really occurs. The second possibility is that partner one is at risk of losing his or her job. And how do we define that is uh, if partner one is employed during the first quarter, but is already looking for another job because he think that he is at risk of losing the job uh, in the next quarter. Um, and for this group, we will restrict also ourselves to people for whom at the end, so in the second quarter, the risk did not materialize, so that they stay employed in the second quarter. Why are we doing so? The first reason is that we want an additional effect of an actual job loss, so we, we don't want to capture people who really lose their job. And the second thing is that we don't want the risk to be an end of contract because it would mean that there is a sort of anticipation for partner two. And uh, partner two can adapt the labor supply um, in two possible ways. First, um, if partner two is inactive in the first quarter, he can decide to enter the labor market. This is uh, the extensive margin that I will show you. Um, and if um, partner two is employed during the first quarter, then uh, what he can do in terms of labor supply is to increase the number of hours worked. And so usually in papers, what is done is to look at the actual uh, increase in the number of hours worked. Here we will add also um, uh, a question which is asking on the willingness to increase the number of hours worked. So it's not only the actual change in, uh, in working time, but also in the willingness to increase um, this number of hours worked. So now that you have the definition in mind, let me uh, present you some descriptive statistics. So in our uh, sample, um, a job loss is occurring for 0.52% of our sample, which means that it's um, 26,000 people, and a risk of job loss is for 0.22% of uh, the sample. And we see um, on those graphs that those two series, while not really perfectly correlated with crisis, seems to react to those crisis periods, so that the number of people who are actu actually losing their job or at risk of losing job is higher during crisis. And it also means that the number of households who will adapt or potentially adapt the labor supply is also higher. Uh, one last thing for, for this slide is that those numbers could seem for you uh, quite small, but we think that um, it can apply to a more uh, larger group. And um, this small numbers is basically due to our identification strategy, which really restricts um, the, uh, the, the number of people losing their job because they have been fired, and the risk is only for people who, who stay employed at the end. But if we rely on other surveys, um, for example, Eurofonds, um, they show that 6% of their respondents are at risk or, or think that they may uh, lose their job in the next six months. And this figure is even higher also during uh, crisis. Okay, so as I can expect, probably uh, most of you don't really know what are the figures of how many people are changing their labor status between two consecutive quarters. So let me show you just baseline figures on what is happening if there is no job loss or no risk of, of losing job. In that case, a partner two is at 8% probability of shifting from inactivity to activity um, between two consecutive quarters. And in terms of the uh, intensive margin, a partner two is at 4% probability to increase or to want to increase the number of hours worked. And what we also see here 
is that entering the labor market, it's more likely to be the case for the highly educated people, for uh, parents and for men, and increasing the number of hours worked is more likely to be the case for the low educated people. Okay, so now we will really enter into the heart of the analysis and I will try to answer to that question, what is really the impact of a risk of job loss on the partner's uh, labor supply? And to do so, uh, what we will do is to um, relate it together, the change in the labor supply of partner two with the risk of job loss of partner one. And since we are also interested um, to what extent the reaction can change depending on the gender of partner two, we will also add an interaction term. Of course, we have to control for a set uh, of variables, uh, which will be the age, the level of education of both partner, uh, the marital status uh, of the household, the number of children in the households. We will also control for uh, the sector of activity of both partners and also the reason for inactivity or for uh, part-time. What we will also add is fixed effects, and this fixed effect is taking into account any shock or policy change that could affect both partners uh, simultaneously. And here is our first uh, main findings. So um, what our regression is showing is that indeed there is such a labor supply adjustment, both if there is an actual job loss for partner one, but also if there is a risk of job loss for partner one. And um, the adjustment when there is a risk of job loss at the extensive margin, so the probability to enter the labor market is 2.4 percentage point higher if your partner is at risk of losing job. And if you remember the descriptive statistic of the 8% of people that usually change their labor supply, it means that this is a 30% increase. So this is still a substantial adjustment of the labor supply. Um, in terms of intensive margin, what we see is that the effect of um, a risk of job loss is almost as big as an actual job loss. And this means that we have a bit more than 50% increase in the probability to want to uh, work more hours uh, in the next quarter. And as I told you at the beginning, um, Part of the literature is uh, showing that those results could vary depending on the business cycle uh, where you stand. And so what we are uh, doing in this paper is to estimate separately uh, the same regression, but uh, looking at non-crisis period versus crisis periods. And uh, what our results are showing is that um, for most of the regression, there is no difference between crisis and non-crisis period except if you are at a risk of losing job, and if this is the case, and you are in a situation uh, where you are in a, in a recession, then the labor supply adjustment of your partner, so the probability to enter the labor market, is as big as if there is an actual job loss of this partner. And um, why do we think this is uh, also the case, is that probably the, the, the probability that the risk will materialize is higher in crisis period. The, the number of people losing their job is also higher. And so um, this effect is really um, important and highlights the, um, the importance of uncertainty during those crisis periods in understanding the labor supply adjustment of the household. One last comment, uh, and that was also true for, for the last um, tables, is that um, in terms of interaction with gender, we don't see any difference in the labor supply adjustment of a partner two depending on its gender, except at the uh, intensive margin when there is an actual job loss. And this could probably be due to the fact that there are still more women who are working part-time and so have this possibility to uh, increase the number of hours. In terms of figures, this is 22% of women working part-time, so again, 4% of men. 
Um, let me now enter into this um, heterogeneity impact of um, either an actual job loss or a risk of job loss. And I will start with um, how the impact will vary depending on the presence of children in the household. So what we are doing here is again doing the same regression, but separately for households with and without children. And what our results are showing is that there is a significant difference between um, parents and non-parents if there is an actual job loss and only at the extensive margin and the effect is three times bigger. Which means that um, if partner one actually lose his or her job, partner two is three times more likely to enter the labor market as a response to that shock. And um, what we thought about a potential explanation for that could be um, that for those uh, households with children, the fact of losing an income is an important shock because here we are looking at households for which one partner was working and the other one was inactive. So it means that there were only one income in the household and this income is lost. And the presence of children put some pressure to the parents to go to the labor market and try to find a job. And why uh, we do not observe this when there is only a risk of losing job, we think that it could be linked to the fact that those households are also more constrained in terms of childcare. So it's costly for them to really enter the labor market if the reason to be inactive is to take care of the children then it's costly to, to react that way. And so this is why we do not observe differences between household with and without children when there is only a risk of losing job. And um, finally, um, the, the second heterogeneity that we uh, looked at is depending on the level of education of partner two. And so we looked at uh, low, medium, and high educated people and what our results are showing is that if there is an actual job loss, the reaction of partner two is increasing with uh, its level of education. And interestingly, uh, what our results is also showing is that if there is a risk of job loss, the only statistically different impact is for the low educated people who are more likely to react both at the extensive and the intensive margin. So this is the group uh, who is already reacting when there is a risk of job loss, both either by entering the labor market or wanted to adapt the number of hours worked, while the uh, high educated can wait for the risk to materialize and then decide to enter the labor market. Um, why do we uh, think this could be the case that the low educated people are reacting more already to a risk? The first reason could be that, um, in fact, couples tend to match with the level of education. So, for example, if partner two is low educated, the probability for partner one to also be low educated is 60%. So, what we are observing here is mostly people with both a low level of education, which also means that um, the risk for partner one to really lose uh, his or her job is higher because for that group, the number of people really losing their job is also higher. Secondly, it also means that the income level of those households is lower, uh, the saving buffer uh, is lower, and there is a higher risk of poverty. So the need to really bring a revenue is higher, and so the reaction is at an uh, early stage. And finally, the third potential explanation could be that those low educated people are, um, have higher difficulty to enter the labor market or to adapt their working time. We all know probably that the low educated people have a, a lower employment rate and they also have a higher propensity to be uh, working part-time involuntarily. And so it can take more time for them to really uh, have the, the, the labor uh, supply adapted. And so this is why they enter at a pretty early uh, stage. 
Before uh, summarizing all the results, just one word on Belgium, since we have a, a, at the conference uh, of the National Bank of Belgium. But unfortunately, given our data, there is some limitations. Um, the panel only started in 2017, which means that we have really few observations. And we don't have all the information for all the quarters. So we cannot really use the same identification strategy. But still, um, what we have done is to look at any transition out of employment without focusing on dismissals. And what our results are showing is that uh, if we do the same for our 16 European countries, the coefficients are pretty similar. So what we think is that the results that we are showing here could probably um, be um, applied to uh, the Belgian case. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, so let me just uh, give you our key takeaways from this presentation. So first of all, this paper highlights the importance of uncertainty in the uh, household labor supply decision. And uh, we show that already when there is a risk of losing job, there is already an adaptation of the labor supply of the partner. And we quantify this uh, labor supply adjustment at 30% for the extensive margin and 52% for the intensive margin. What we also show is that this impact is particularly large during crisis, which is also a period for which the number of people who are concerned by this risk are also higher. Um, we also uh, see that there is no gender differences, which means that we are probably going far more far away from the classical male breadwinner principle, except at the intensive margin when there is still a high number of women working part-time and so having this possibility to adapt uh, the number of hours worked. What we also show is that the presence of children uh, change the reaction, but only if there is an actual job loss and uh, only at the extensive margin. And we think that um, providing more childcare availabilities uh, could help those households to already manage the risk at an early stage when there is uh, a fear of losing job. And the uh, last finding to be highlighted is that the low educated are already reacting when there is a risk of job loss, while the highly educated can wait for the risk to materialize. And we think that is, uh, these findings really echoes to um, the vulnerability of the low educated people uh, in the labor markets. I really thank you for your attention and uh, wait for the discussion. Thank you.